you're going to be using a journal, which I really encourage you to do. Write down what your stone looks like, what it feels like to you energetically. This is your first real date with your stone. So write down what, it, what does the stone feel like, what does he or she look like, if you're going to choose to look at it as a masculine or a feminine energy, if they choose to come in that way for you. So what do they look like? What are you hearing? What are you intuiting as you're in this sacred space with the stone person? And you may find that you're hearing some really far out things and don't censor. Write everything down, no matter how short or how long the messages that you're getting are. So you might hear things, you might see things. Again, we've talked about this in previous videos that just let the messages come however they do and write those down so that you can reference those as we progress along in this course. This is really your first getting to know your stone. So notice, and I'm just going to give you an example um, as a way to start getting to know the stone. Okay, so this stone fits perfectly in the palm of my right hand, which because I'm left-handed, this is my receiving um, side. My passive more, passive, more feminine side as far as receiving messages would go. So he, he fits. I'm... Um, he, so this is a more masculine energy, he's choosing to come in as a more masculine energy to work with me, um, fits perfectly in my hand. He's nice and heavy and it feels good. It feels very grounding in my hand as I'm, as I'm holding this stone. So what else do I notice? Well, he isn't perfectly round. You can see that he's got some ridges, some different shapes, and some of his sides, if you will, have quite a bit of quartz you see that shining through you can see that peeking out and we've got some areas that are clear with the quartz some that are extremely white some that are yellowed like an old bone that's been washed by water for years and years and years there's some yellow markings some orange in some spots there's such a great uh, reflection and then in others the space is quite dull. I can see the different divots from being against other stones and in the earth that he has. And now I can start to see things. So you can see how by starting with the examination and the, the physical looking at the stone and being present to the stone in front of you, then you'll start to receive things. So what am I seeing now? Now I'm seeing an image of a little girl running and running through a field in the summer and there's a beautiful blue sky above her and she's starting a different journey. The wind is just blowing her hair behind her and she is alone and she feels safe. So you can see, okay, so now I've received an image from the stone. So you want to go ahead and, and write that down in your journal when you feel like it's time to take a pause from your conversation with the stone. And then if you are getting an image or hearing something, you can ask the stone yourself inwardly what that message means. So you can see already that you can use your stone as a divination tool because... I'm already getting an image and now I'm asking the stone and my intuition what that message means for me at this time. So you can go ahead and ask that question, okay, what is this image, what does the meaning of this image have for me? And then see what answer you get. And then, as you are holding the stone, or if it's, if it's on the, the space that it's going to reside in for the time you're working together, as you're looking at the stone, um, begin to Ask the stone what the work that you're going to be sharing in together with for this series. You know, what, what, is the, what is the work that you're going to be doing together for this series? So ask the stone this question, either inwardly or if you're alone and able to, you can ask that outwardly and see what messages come up for you. You might hear the word healing. You might... Um, smell rosemary or mint or something like that, but you'll get an intuition of what the work is that you're going to be doing together and what message the stone wants to share with you at this time. So really honor that. 
and give yourself plenty of time with this question with your stone about what this work is that you're going to be doing together now. So while you are sitting in the sacred space, you're going to be, first of all, writing down the attributes of your stone, the feelings and sensory experience you have with your stone, and then you're going to be seeing if any visions or messages come in and asking the stone what the work is that you will be doing together throughout this series. There will be one video a week in this series, and you will have the whole week to repeat this exercise as often as you like and feel drawn to do. I really encourage you, even though I've condensed this down for this video, to really spend quite a bit of time, especially on this first exercise, journaling about your experience with the stone as you are having the experience with the stone or immediately after you have the experience with your stone. So you are getting to know your stone right now and you can ask if it feels appropriate for you what the name of the stone is or what the stone would like to be called for the series. Um, it's a lot of fun to have a name to communicate with the stone with because it's just a little bit easier for us as humans to enter into a conversation with someone when we know their name. So you can go ahead and ask that question. See what you get for a response. You might see an image of someone you know and it could be that they want to be called that name. So just be aware of that. Be really open with that. Now if you're doing card work, you can ask the stone to energetically help you to draw a card that will give you some insight into the work that you are about to embark on together. So you can use a tarot or an oracle deck for this. This is not a necessary part of this series. I'm just giving you a little add-on if, if you do card work and you happen to enjoy it. A lot of you come to my channel because of my tarot videos. So this is something that you can choose to do. Um, and again, you can use a tarot or an oracle deck. If you don't have a deck or you don't want to use a deck, simply ask, continue to ask the stone for more information as far as the messages that they have to share with you at this time and what they are. So let me just look around for a moment. I just want to see what deck. And while I'm looking around, I'm keeping open to what I'm hearing from the stone. So for me, I really hear them very clearly, very vibrationally. So just tune in. Okay, so I'm going to use the Ludi Leskit Tarot for this. I'm just going to shuffle really briefly. And again, I'm just listening, just being aware of what the message is from the stone person. Hmm. And I drew a page of swords. So Earth of Air, let me just show you that image a little closer. New beginnings, new journey, clear messages. Having trust and faith and not getting into too much of a thinking space in our work together. That is what the stone is telling me at this time that our work together is going to mean for me. And I will also be doing my own work with this stone doing exactly what we talk about in this video on my own time as well. And then I will be doing another video at some point in time, kind of chronicling what my experience has been. So you can see how I have done the work as well and how it's worked for me and get kind of an idea of what you'll be experiencing if you're a little bit nervous about doing this or uncomfortable with this idea. So when you feel like you've had an, a great amount of communication and enough communication with your stone, for this time, for this getting to know you period, um, then you can energetically end the connection and the communication. If you, you can end the communication. If you choose to, you can end the connection. So how I would do that is just to sit with the stone for a few moments, thanking the stone, thanking the energy that is choosing to give a, a healing work for me at this time that resides within the stone and asking for the stone's blessing and giving the stone my blessing as well. And then just asking him if he has any messages to share, any further messages to share with me that I'd be able to hear and intuit and understand them clearly as I go about the rest of my day. And you'll quite often feel in your fingers energetically the stone's energy.
and uh, I feel like pinpricks with him. It's very active. He's very active still in the sky. So just sit with that. And when you feel like it's time, you can place your stone back on the altar that you created for him or her or they. And just thank the stone again. If you are using a candle and you're using fire magic for this, then you can go ahead and blow that out. <laughs> Thanking the element of fire, the energies that work with the inner with the elements of fire for aiding this magical working. This is a form of magic and creation. So we do want to thank the elements for their work and thank the grandmothers and whatever energies you've called in to hold space for you through this. Thank all of them. And you can choose to meditate if you want now for a little while. At this point, after you've finished your direct communication with the stone, see if you get any more messages from your stone, what comes through for you. And then when you feel ready, making sure that you're grounded, imagining those roots coming from the bottoms of your feet, from your tailbone, from your, the palms of your hands into the earth, connecting you with Pachamama, just grounding and keeping you safe so that you can re-enter the physical realm and um, not be a harm to yourself or anyone else. <laughs> Just make sure you do that. And then you can go ahead and go about your day or your night or whenever you choose to do this working. Um, so really what this next step in the series is about is just the beginning of getting to know your stone. Um, and I really, again, I'm really encouraging you to do a lot of journaling through this process so that you can see the growth that you experience with the stone and the growth to using your psychic abilities because really this series is also an intro to using your psychic abilities if you feel that you haven't used them or you don't know how or you're not very comfortable with them. So you're also chronicling the use of your psychic abilities because you're intuiting and tuning in to get these messages from the stone. So I hope that this has been an, a helpful video for you and that you'll be able to create your own sacred space and your own ritual working through, um, through this week as we go through the week and do this work together. Um, and again, you don't have to like try to write down everything I said in this video and make sure you do it exactly. Um, just watch this, turn it off when it feels like it's time to do the ritual working with your stone. Just go with whatever comes up in your head and whatever questions you're drawn to write down and answers that you get and all of the, those things. Don't get into a space of worrying about doing everything that we've talked about in this video. Go with whatever comes to you. Um, my One of my main goals in the healing work that I do is helping people to realize that there is no right or wrong and that you are always doing things as you are meant to do them. So. Just stay in that energetic space of trusting and allowing and not needing to be right or wrong or do everything the right way. Just enjoy these moments that you have to just tune into spirit and be present and uh, make sure that you honor the stone person that's chosen to work with you for this series. So I will see you in the next video. I thank you all for watching and I'm sending you many blessings and a blessed aspect as we enter the blood mode and the lunar eclipse as well. Take care.